My dear brothers and sisters, with the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we accomplished the holy mystery of the holy unction. It's a great mystery. It's one of the most ancient, most the oldest, we can say, mystery of the church. And it, it comes from even the time of Jesus Christ. And when he sent his disciples, sending them and said, go visit those that are <clears throat> suffering with infirmities and sickness and put oil on them. Right? So this is what we did. We put oil on each one who comes in awe and ask the Lord for healing of soul and body as we heard. <clears throat> so we, he we heard a lot of prayers, apostle reading, and gospel. Exactly seven apostle reading and seven gospels. Prayers were, were more, than, more than that. So, in the last gospel that we heard, we heard about the, the guy that was sitting up and collecting the, the taxes, the tax collector, Matthew, which later became an apostle, an evangelist. But you see, the Pharisees were criticizing Christ for that act. And they approached his disciples and said, Why do you, teacher, sit and eat with the sinner, the sinful ones? And of course, Jesus, knowing their heart and their mind, he answered that not those that are well are in need of a physician, of a doctor. Who goes to the doctor when doesn't have anything? Sometimes you'll go for an annual checkup or something, but if you have nothing, you avoid going there, right? But when you're in pain, you have something, so then you're trying to make an appointment and as soon as possible. If not, you're going to, going to the emergency room, right? So, and this is what Jesus is pointed that he approach, is approaching the, those that are in spiritual need. So, and I want to share with you a beautiful story of a monk that did something similar. So, there was a young lady, beautiful, gorgeous, but sinful. She was, she became a harlot, a lady of the street. So, every, every normal, as we would think today, normal person would avoid her. But this very spiritual monk took her by hand and she followed him. And the people had a very bad reaction. Oh, with your charms, you got even the, this holy monk and to sin with you. So the monk didn't say anything, just took. And as they were walking, they saw an abandoned child. And that lady took the child and showed love and nourished him. And the monk took both of them, the harlot and the baby. So they moved in another place and he was helping them. Now, someone from that town, by chance, 
found to be in the place where they were now and recognized and said, oh, that is true. Now even the child looks like him, so she, he have a child with her, right? See how quick are we to judge others and to finger point on them. <clears throat> so years later, when the child now was about 12 years old, something like that, the monk decided to come back in that town. So he came back, and when they, they arrived there, he became very sick. And he knew that his time, his departure on the life eternal is near. So he asked all the people of, the, of that town to come and that he has something to confess to them. So they all came and he asked them to bring him burning charcoal. They brought burning charcoal. So he prayed and asked God, Lord, let it be according to thy word. As you, you said, to hold the burning charcoals in our, in our hands as you did not burn the unburning bush when you appeared to talk to Moses. So now discovered the truth and he put the burning charcoals on his chest and nothing happened to him, right? Not, not, not even the rope was burned. And he said, as this charcoal does not burn me, I never touched this woman. So, and this is how the truth was revealed. He saved her from the sin and he saved that child from dying on the street. You see, but w when we are seeing something like that, our mind goes directly to the scene, right? We're not giving to anyone any chance because we know it all. We're smarter than everybody and immediately we're jumping to judge people, right? But we don't know what is behind the scene, right? So that's why we have always to be focused not on the appearance, and first of all, to be focused on our own sins, because we have a lot. We have a lot to work on. So not to focus on what Maria or what, I don't know who else, Basil or who, whoever uh, is doing, right? But what we are doing. <laughs> what has to do directly with us and with our relationship with God. This is what the Lord wants us to understand. And this is what he pointed in, in, in the gospel. Those who are sick are in need of the doctor, not those who are well, well. So if we look in this content today, in our modern society, spiritually speaking, who does not need the spiritual doctor today? We're all in need of spiritual doctor. And where are the patients? We're all sick today, spiritual, in, in different kind of illnesses and infirmities. We are bending like, like that woman from the gospel. We, we are scourging, we are so many different kind, blind and lame and paralyzed, right? And, and where are we today? Instead of running after Christ, holding onto his robe, holding onto the robe of his mother, the Theotokos, and the saints being part of the church with tears and compassion, asking for forgiveness and trying to build up this relationship with him. Instead, what we are doing, we're running to parties, to festivals, and I don't know what else. This is the modern society, a godless society, a sinful society, and very sick society. But I call you, 
as Saint John the Baptizer said, repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Let us repent. Let us come back to our sins, to our mind, and let us come forth to embrace Christ, to be embraced by him, that with one mind we may glorify the Trinity of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, always, now, and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen.